Hey guys, Owen here, and today I'm going to be building the 172nd scale Airfix T3485 kit. Before starting, I washed all the parts in warm soapy water with a splash of vinegar. In the lower hull sides, there were sunken injection pin markings which I removed with a file. I didn't need to do this though, as they would later get covered by the wheels and tracks. On the backs of the wheels, there was some flashing which needed to be removed. Apart from this, the wheels fitted well. The drive wheels did not have holes moulded into them, only indents, so I made holes with a pin vise. I drilled through the markings first, then glued the wheel together. Once dried, I drilled through the other half. On the smaller drive wheel, I found it easiest to mark the holes with a pin into the back half of the wheel then drill through them separately before gluing them together as the smaller wheels were more fragile. The wheels didn't fit onto the hull perfectly straight but this wasn't too noticeable. Some of the smallest pieces, especially the front machine gun, had a lot of flashing surrounding them which I carefully removed while the parts were still on the sprue. Toolboxes along the side of the hull had little hinge markings moulded onto them, which unfortunately in some cases did not look as though they lined up. The exhaust pipes fitted well and small holes were later made in the ends with a hot sewing needle. The fuel tanks needed a fair amount of sanding to hide the join and there was no detail on them. The way of attaching the tanks to the hull was quite flimsy and it wasn't clear in the instructions which way up they were supposed to be mounted. Surprisingly, the hull machine gun and tow hooks looked good once they were neatened up and were put in place with a pair of tweezers. A hole had to be made with a pin vise to attach the headlight. The instructions had options to build either the T3476 turret or the T3485 turret. The T3476 turret fitted horribly with a massive gap between the gun mantlet and the turret roof and the roof didn't fit flush with the sides. There was also a fair amount of flashing on the gun. After sanding down the inside of the roof and the flashing on the gun, the fit was better but would still require a lot of filler. The T3485 turret was only slightly better. Again, the fit of the turret roof to the sides was very poor, but the gun was free of flashing. With a bit of a scratch-built interior, the commander's cupola hatch could be left open. Again, the inside of the roof had to be sanded down, but the fit was still not good and the filler was required. I filled the gaps along the bottoms of the toolboxes and the massive gap in the T3476 turret, along with the cracks around the roofs of both turrets and the joins at the back. Once the filler had dried, I gently scraped off the excess with a blunt object, in this case the end of a wooden clothes peg. I later neatened this up with a file. I decided to experiment creating weld seams. I carefully dabbed a line of poly cement glue along where I wanted the seam to be, using reference photos as guidance. I then went back over the glue once it had softened the plastic with a slashing motion. I got better with practice, but I really think 176 scale is too small for this effect to look good. I thinned down Humbrol 91 and painted it over the filler to check it had blended with the plastic nicely. I continued to use the thinned paint to pre-shade the darkest areas of the kit, mainly the lower hull. I used a cotton bud to soften the edges of the paint where necessary. For some of the really dark areas, such as the underside, I applied a second coat of thinned Humbrol 91. Once this had dried, I made sure to scrape any paint off the areas of contact between parts so the glue could bond the plastic correctly. The hull parts fitted quite nicely, but were a bit flimsy, 
so they were secured in place with masking tape while the glue dried. Humbrol enamel 117 was used as the main colour. I thinned it down to roughly the consistency of milk to minimise brush strokes. Before applying a third and final coat of thinned Humbrol 117, I had painted over the dark areas again with Humbrol 91. To create further variation in the paint colour, I mixed Humbrol 117 with a light grey, Humbrol 64, to create a lighter shade of green. I found that stippling this into the centres of large, empty areas helped give the paint a worn look. I mixed an almost black dark grey for the machine gun, tyres and vents. Two layers of watered down PVA glue were applied to the areas where the decals would go. The semi-gloss finish will stop the decals from silvering. Decals were applied in my usual way, with microset decal solution and holding the decals in warm water for about 10 seconds. There's a link to a more detailed video on how to apply decals in this video's description. Once the decals had dried, I applied Microsol decal solution over them. This helped them conform to the moulded detail in the plastic. After a few hours to dry, the decals were sealed with a coat of watered down PVA glue. I mixed a thin black enamel wash with Humbrol 33 and applied it to the tracks. I rubbed off excess with a paper towel. Once the wash had dried, I rubbed some burnt sienna into the tracks and blended it with a brush. After that, the tracks were dry brushed silver with Humbrol 53. I got half the tracks on before stapling the ends together. Then once they were better fitted to the model, I heated a pair of tweezers on a candle and fused them together. The tracks sprung up unrealistically, so to fix this I drilled holes in the hull sides, which I could then thread a bent paper clip through. If I had thought about it, this could have been done much more easily earlier in the build process. There was still a problem with the track springing up at the centre, so I pushed a matchstick to the back and painted it dark green to hide it. There was then the problem that the tracks were springing up underneath. To solve this I packed blobs of plasticine into the hull to weigh down the model onto the tracks. The kit was now ready for a chalk wash. I mixed a light brown wash to apply over the whole model first, using a drop of washing up liquid, white and brown chalk and water. There's a link in the description to a more detailed video on chalk washes. I added a darker brown wash in places to add some colour variation. Where it had dried in little spots, I reactivated the wash using a wet brush to spread out or remove the excess to get the desired effect. Rubbing a damp cotton bud over the whole model helped tone down the wash further. A thin coat of matte varnish was applied to seal the wash. I used a piece of paper clip and Humbrol 53 to create small amounts of chipping. I looked at reference photos to see where this mostly occurred. It's so small that you can't see it very easily on the video, but it's these subtle details that I think make the model look more realistic. A small amount of rusting was applied to the rear with watered down Humbrol 86. Again I checked this on reference photos. A light dry brushing of Humbrol 29 added further subtle colour variation to the lower areas of the hull. I checked reference photos to see where the dust and dirt built up most, and there was quite a lot under the fuel tanks. Some white was mixed in with the Humbrol 29 and dry brushed on to add yet another subtle colour variation. Finally, the model was complete. So here is the finished model with the T3485 turret on. Um, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. The turret and the tracks were the worst bits, as usual. I mean, you can't expect much from those rubber band tracks. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was actually surprisingly good for a 1967 mould. Like, I thought the detail on the hull was quite nice. And I liked how you got a choice of turrets. So I really enjoyed building it, actually. And I think those subtle weathering techniques and things have really made it look quite realistic. So I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.